What's up, everyone? James Lynch here doing a quick reaction video to the news that Nick Diaz will be returning at UFC Abu Dhabi. He's going to be taking on Vicente Luque. This according to Dana White. Championship rounds listing all of the fights here. So we've got Nick Diaz, Vicente Luque, Tony Ferguson against Michael Chiesa, which I don't mind as much. We'll talk about that in a sec. And a fight that I suggested after her last fight, uh, Mackenzie Dern and Lupi Godinez. I think that fight actually makes a lot of sense. But let's start first with Nick Diaz returning here. Um, why? Like, what are we doing here? Um... I, I'm guessing if I had to take a guess as to why Nick Diaz is still fighting, he's probably trying to get out of his contract and going to do other things like boxing. I wish the UFC would just let him go instead of doing this nonsense of trying to pretend that Nick Diaz is a UFC caliber fighter at this point. Do you guys remember his last fight against Robbie Lawler? He quit. He flat out quit. He did not want to continue. It was a TKO retirement for Robbie Lawler. I think it was TKO. Um, in round three in a fight that really did not live up to any sort of hype whatsoever Diaz looked if there's ever a fight where a fighter did not want to be in there It was that fight with Nick Diaz and Robbie Lawler that rematch and I just don't know what we're doing here four straight uh, th three losses a no contest against Anderson Silva uh, Which is a fight that he ended up losing um, but again turned to a no contest because Silva got popped and You know a handful of fights since what 2011 Like what are we doing here? And look I get where the UFC is coming from Abu Dhabi, they treat the UFC very well. They need to stack these cards with big names. I understand that, but I just like, I don't get this at all. Like, why not just let him out of his contract? It just, to me, shows the UFC is really just trying to squeeze every little last bit they can out of names on their roster. And again, something I've talked about before, it looks a little desperate on the UFC's part that they need to go to the well and get a guy like Nick Diaz to fight again, as opposed to getting someone else who might be more deserving or, you know, again, if they didn't do so many events, they'd have more options here for Abu Dhabi. Um, so, so he's fighting Luque and like, I just like, I don't know what people want to see. There's going to be Diaz fans out there that think, oh yeah, he had the surgery and you know, he's going to be a lot better. Um, and, and he's, and he's, you know, th this is going to be the new Nick Diaz. I've heard that for years and we haven't seen it. And like, yeah, I just like, I'm not a fan of this fight at all. I do not want to see Nick Diaz fight again. And he's fighting Luque, who's, you know, let's be honest here, kind of on a decline himself. He's had one good win in between here uh, against Rafa Dos Anjos. But, you know, the Jeff Neal fight, he did not look good in that and then got finished by Buckley. Even though Luque is a little bit younger here, he is uh, 32. Um, you know, I, I, I still just like, I don't see the purpose of this. I think Luque is probably going to win this fight. And then what do you do with him? He beat Nick Diaz. Big deal. Like, I, I really don't understand the, the logic here. So, yeah, not a fan of Nick Diaz fighting again in the UFC. I would prefer the UFC just let him go and let Diaz do what he wants. Let him make his own decisions. Let him make his own money. I just don't think Nick Diaz is a UFC caliber fighter. And I think that last fight against Robbie Lawler very much proved that, that he didn't want to be there. And some people say he was forced into it. I mean, I, I, it doesn't matter. He just did not look like a UFC caliber fighter in that fight. Okay, second fight we'll talk about here quickly. Tony Ferguson, Michael Chiesa. I actually don't mind this fight. My big issue with Tony Ferguson's last fight um, against uh, Patty Pimblett was they were purposely trying to build up Patty Pimblett off Tony Ferguson's name. I didn't like that. Of course, Patty won that fight. Patty did not look great. Like, I think that was a lose-lose for both fighters. Patty won, but he didn't look good. Ferguson lost. I mean, how many losses is it going to take for Ferguson to, to, to retire here? At least with this fight, it's a throwback fight, right? Like these two, I believe we're on the same season of the Ultimate Fighter, or at the very least were, um, yeah, I think they were on the same season. Anyways, don't have time to look that up, but, um, you know, that this is kind of a throwback fight between two guys that are close to retiring. So I don't mind this as much. I'm assuming this is at 170. I guess it's far too big to cut down to 155. They didn't say. I don't mind this fight as much. Again, the UFC is kind of cheaply trying to get a, you know, a, a name on a card in Tony Ferguson to try and bo bolster up their card. So that's my thoughts on this fight. My pick in this one, probably Kiesa. He's just a lot bigger. And, you know, I know Kiesa has not looked amazing in his last couple fights. He's 36 years old. He's also lost three in a row. I think Kiesa will do enough to get it done. That's just my early pick on that. Now, this fight I do like. Mackenzie Dern, Lupi Godinez, a pair of fighters that have looked like they were going to be contenders and then have lost some key fights. In the case of Dern... Um, you know, losing her last fight to Amanda Lemos, got, you know, lost there, got finished by Andrade, just the one win over Angela Hill, which was close, and then lost to Jan Shonan. So she's only losing to really good fighters. You could say the same thing for Lupi Godinez. Um, Would have liked her to beat Jana Roba, but, you know, look at this win streak here, pretty good. Also, you know, lost to Angela Hill, hasn't been able to get over the hump. I'm, I'm fine with this fight, but yeah, not a fan of Nick Diaz coming back. Like, I just think... Here, here's, here's what I mean by the UFC does too many events. If they didn't do as many events, you could pull some of those big names from the other cards and put it on a card like this. Instead, it says to me that, you know, they're just like, we need something. So we're going to, we're going to grab Nick Diaz here and we're going to put him on the card. I don't like that. 
Also, if Nick Diaz was available to come back, why wouldn't they put him on UFC 300? That makes more sense. Maybe they tried. I don't know. But, um, you know, Nick Diaz and Abu Dhabi, like, I know they're trying to appease the Abu Dhabi, you know, government and all that stuff because, again, they get treated very well. But, again, I just don't see the purpose of this fight because, like I said, Luke is probably going to win this. Where does he go from here? Probably nowhere. I could even understand if they wanted to do Nick Diaz against... I don't know, like some sort of up and comer in the weight class that Diaz would have a chance against, like even like a contender series winner. I'd be more than happy with that because at least you're building someone up. Like Luke's probably not going to be a contender ever again after the, some of the key losses that he's had. Again, Ferguson, Kiesa, no issues there. Ferguson, like I said, it, hopefully this is his last fight. I think it's a fun throwback fight. And actually, I'm going to go double check the cast. I'm pretty sure they were on the same cast of, uh, it was tough 13, right? My memory's going, guys, in case you haven't noticed. So I wanted to double check who was on each team here. Um, so it was Ferguson. No, Kiesa was on the other season. My bad. Well, good thing I checked that because I knew I was going to have a well actually guy in the comments being like, they weren't on the same season, dude. So yeah, again, I don't mind this one. Kind of low risk. And, and here's the key thing, too, with Kiesa and Ferguson. Kiesa is a sub guy. So is Ferguson. You don't have to worry about like Ferguson fighting like a guy with some serious knockout power. Like if this was Tony Ferguson and Jeff Neal, I'd be a little bit more worried. But Kies is a sub guy, so not that big of a deal that he's fighting him. You don't have to worry about Ferguson taking any further damage. This will most likely be a jiu-jitsu match. Even with Luke, like there is that worry there that maybe he, you know, cracks Diaz and finishes him. I don't know. We'll see. So that's sort of my thoughts on these breaking news matchups here. Again, Dana White announcing this for UFC Abu Dhabi. Let's have a quick look at the card as it stands right now. This is the Umar and Corey card, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> Which, this isn't even a pay-per-view. This is a fight night, right? So, I mean, look at this card. Vera and Figueroa we just added these fights there. This is a pretty solid fight night. This might go down as one of the best fight night cards of all time. But, again, I didn't think the UFC needed to bring back Nick Diaz at this point. And let's say, you know, obviously this fight's going to go through and Diaz is going to take the fight. Um... Let's hope this is it for Nick Diaz. And I'm not trying to disrespect Nick Diaz whatsoever. I was a huge Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz was one of the reasons I got into watching the UFC. I'll never forget his fight with Diego Sanchez way back in the day. That really got me to become a fan of Diaz. But he has not been the same fighter in years. The Condit fight and, and the St. Pierre fight were probably the last two times we saw him do anything good. The Silva fight. I know people love that matchup. He goofed around half the fight. Didn't enjoy that. And then Lawler, like I said, like that was not fun to watch. And I, I, am very, I still get surprised by Diaz fans being like, yeah, I want to see Nick Diaz come back because he didn't look good in the Lawler fight. And Lawler retired like shortly after that, right? So, well, I shouldn't say shortly after that, a couple years after that. But still, he hasn't fought since 2021. So big layoff coming in. He's 40 years old. It looks like he is back to training. I mean, there was a period with Diaz where it looked like he was partying all the time. So that's at least good. But yeah, not a fan of Nick Diaz coming back and fighting in the UFC. So I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you happy to see Nick Diaz back? If you are, I would like to hear why. What are your early picks for some of these fights? What do you think of the other matchups? Let me know in the comments. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. I'm James Lynch. Voice is getting slowly better. Appreciate you tuning in, and I'll talk to you guys.